Imagine something capable of hitting two objects hundreds of kilometers from each other at the same time. Do you think this is some kind of the latest deadly weaponry? In fact, this is simply lightning. We can see it as an abrupt lightning bolt, but we can't even imagine the true scale of this formidable natural phenomenon. How big can lightning actually get? What does it look like from space? And what do elves have to do with it? The altitudes where lightning is born are limited by the height of a thundercloud, the direct source of lightning, which is 20 kilometers or 12.4 miles at its highest. Since the temperature always remains below 0 degrees Celsius or 32 Fahrenheit above 3 or 4 kilometers, that's between 1.8 to 2.4 miles, the clouds are mainly ice. They are different in size and continuously on the move due to air currents rising up from the heated Earth's surface. The smaller ice particles are lighter, so they're constantly traveling upwards inside the cloud and colliding with larger ice particles, thus generating electric charges. As a result, Strong, positive charges develop in the upper region of a cloud, with strong negative charges developing in the lower regions. When two clouds get close to each other with their regions oppositely charged, the air insulation breaks down and lightning occurs. Sometimes the ground acts like an accumulator for the positive charges, so that the lightning strikes directly into the ground. Lightning, in terms of length, is much more unpredictable, reaching several kilometers on average. No one realized its maximum length until 1956, when meteorologist Myron Ligda, using radar, measured a lightning flash, the longest at that time, which turned out to be 100 kilometers or 62 miles long. In 2007, this record was broken, with lightning recorded spanning over 321 kilometers or 200 miles over Oklahoma, so huge that it illuminated a ground area at night of 67,340 square kilometers, that's 26,000 square miles. But the latest maximum size was recorded on October 22, 2017, with a jumbo flash of 500 kilometers, that's 310 miles, which illuminated the sky over Texas, Oklahoma, and Kansas at the same time. Such mega flashes are rare, with only about 1% of lightning flashes overall, as they need special conditions to occur. First, the thunderclouds involved must be several hundred kilometers long. Second, the positively and negatively charged regions must alternate along the entire length of the clouds, making the air layers between them explode one after another like a line of falling dominoes, resulting in huge lightning bolts simultaneously flashing over the entire area. Previously, it had been impracticable to try to measure lightning even if a mega flash occurred. It's become possible only recently thanks to satellites, which have enabled us to identify other features. It was believed until not long ago that lightning from a thundercloud always moves down heading in the direction of the Earth. But in 1989, it was first discovered that lightning can shoot directly up into space. One type of such lightning is called jets. These jets are capable of reaching altitudes of 40 to 70 kilometers, that's 24.9 to 43 and a half miles, and found mainly in tropical regions where strong winds are observed. Usually, it's a cloud to ground movement as negative particles accumulate in the lower areas of the clouds. But sometimes, a strong wind pushes the particles to the upper border of the cloud, causing the lightning to shoot upwards. At even more dizzying altitudes, so-called sprites can be observed. Sprites are also directed upwards into space, but they're more like steady red candles rather than blue flashes at an altitude of 50 to 130 kilometers or 31 to 81 miles above the Earth. Scientists believe that sprites have been responsible for many mistaken UFO sightings. 
people could be shocked at such a sight and mistake a sprite for an extraterrestrial object. At an altitude of 70 kilometers or 43 and a half miles, nitrogen turns sprites red. But the closer to the ground they are, the greater the pressure and the greater the amount of oxygen, so that the sprites get bluish at the lower boundary. The most amazing lightning bolts are called elves. These are not mythical creatures with pointy ears, but merely the abbreviation for emission of light and very low frequency perturbations due to electromagnetic pulse sources. These so-called elves had not previously been associated with lightning, but with just another kind of aurora borealis. Later, these so-called elves turned out to be not just lightning, but a real surge of energy in the form of gamma ray flashes, a phenomenon usually observed with stars. In 1994, scientists happened to pick up gamma ray flashes with all their instruments detecting these flashes somewhere close to the Earth. At the time, they didn't associate these gamma rays with lightning. Only in 2019 did it become clear that the gamma ray emitting source was found in the Earth's atmosphere and that these were the elves, the biggest lightning of all. They appear as a ring-shaped halo around a lightning strike. The ring is 400 kilometers or 248 and a half miles in diameter and lasts up to five milliseconds. Scientists have only just recently been able to snap a photo of some elves. Previously, their presence was revealed only in the radio spectrum. Using the radio signals, scientists have also been able to detect lightning strikes on other planets. Lightning needs clouds to occur, and clouds are absent on Mars due to its rarefied atmosphere. But there is soil and weak gravity there. Due to its small gravitational force, Martian dust rises high into the Martian sky and gathers in clouds, with the grains of sand accumulating the needed electric charges. Therefore, when Earthlings are finally able to colonize Mars, people will see lightning strikes from clumps of dust. As for Venus, our neighbor on the other side, it's been long believed that lightning strikes there are completely impossible due to certain characteristics of the Venusian atmosphere and its magnetic field. However, radio waves from Venus are similar to those emitted during terrestrial lightning storms. One can only guess what they might look like on Venus. When it comes to the biggest lightning strikes, Jupiter is worth mentioning. Since the planet is a gas giant, storm clouds and strong winds occur there almost every second, provoking thunderstorms. Space probes have detected that Jupiter's lightning bolts are greater in size than the territory of the United States. Lightning strikes on Jupiter surpass those on Earth in power, too. As for the rest, they're similar to Earth's lightning, except for a few details. As the structures of the atmospheres differ, lightning on Jupiter is time-stretched and lasts an entire minute. As compared with the tiny fractions of a second on Earth, Jovian lightning usually occurs at the poles, and our terrestrial flashes most often occur closer to the equator. And in some places here on Earth, it becomes simply disastrous. In the village of Kifuka, in the Democratic Republic of the Congo, there's a record frequency of about 158 lightning strikes per square kilometer per year. That's 405 strikes per square mile. Standing on the roof of a house there is almost equivalent to committing suicide, with the proverb, lightning never strikes twice in the same place, simply not working there. Actually, it doesn't work in any other cases either. It's nothing more than just a fine-sounding phrase. Electrical discharges between an electrified cloud and an object closest to the Earth's surface can occur repeatedly. Lightning bolts regularly hit the Empire State Building and the Willis Tower every time a thunderstorm passes over New York City or Chicago. Perhaps in the future, people will be able to tame these flashes from the clouds. Back in 2006, a company called Alternate Energy Holdings Incorporated introduced 
and one year later tested the first prototype of a model capable of capturing a lightning bolt and turning it into pure electricity. This method will allow us to get a cheap and, what's most important, absolutely environmentally friendly electricity. One kilowatt will cost approximately half a cent, which is much cheaper than any other source of energy, with the lightning paying for itself in just four to seven years. Unfortunately, after 2007, no more news was heard about the development of the technologies to this end. So, tell me, if you believe that we can use lightning for our own benefit, if you like this video, subscribe to my channel, click on the bell so you don't miss new episodes still to come, and give it a thumbs up. And of course, share this video with your friends. Riddle's always much more fun together. Until next time.